what I might press on then is another open source library that you are hugely involved in, but might not be as familiar to our audience as SciPy, as NumPy, as Anaconda, which is Numba. Yes, thank you. So Numba is awesome. And fortunately, um, I got the I, I wrote the reference version, <laughs> and then very quickly found Sue uh, Quan Lam, and then uh, several other people who actually helped build Numba, make it better. And so, but when we started Anaconda, that was one of the things we ended up doing was actually writing a compiler for Python called Numba. And I remember bringing that to market, bringing that to the community, bringing that to the Python community. I got all these questions. Wait, on Laden Swallow, PyPy was out there, PyPI, not, 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 not PI, not, not the Python package index, but the Python compiler, <laughs> PyPy, PYPY. Anyway, that lots of people who said, you know, Python compilation, illustrating again the dichotomy between the um, computer scientists and the domain scientists who use computers, right? Like that was like the PyPy people, they were writing something for computer scientists, like a compiler for Python. Cool, awesome. I was writing with Numba, a compiler tool to, to create extensions to Python without writing C code. And it again came from a fundamental itch I had, a fundamental need I had. So when I wrote NumPy, um, NumPy is an array object and a ufunc object, the universal function ufunc. And the ufunc is a uh, something called multiple dispatch. It's a multiple dispatch mechanism in Python. And it's a concept you know people talk about a lot, not in Python land, because in Python land, they talk about you know, multiple inheritance, single inheritance, multi and object oriented. Multiple dispatch is like, I have a function, but they've got three arguments. Well, which, which objects, you know, which object has a method that influences function? Well, if you have three arguments, which one should it be? Uh, not, none of them, like all of them. There's a separate, so you have an independent table. You don't register the table with respect to the objects. You register the U func each, you know, essentially there's a table for every function. And that's all it is. It's a lookup table to say, I've got these arguments, pick which ultimate underlying implementation I'll call. If I have ints or floats or you know, strings, whatever, I call that function. So you funks do that. There's a lot of things they do actually. Make it very nice to do math and, and mix math with floats and integers. And, and, you can, and then particularly double precision, single precision, complex, double precision, complex, uh, single precision, complex. You have a lot of these different, and they all have to be written compiled at least differently at, at uh, the, the, the machine code that's run is a little different based on which type you're running for. So the ufunc, something has to navigate between the Python spelling and which code snippet you're pulling in into like which machine code you're pulling in. That's what the ufunc does. So great. How do you make new ones? Because NumPy comes with a bunch of them. Cool. What if I have a new function I want to write? Like SciPy Special added a bunch of them. Okay, great. I want to write it. You can imagine writing a Python function. A simple example is the sync function, S-A-N-C. It's the sign of pi x over pi x is one in, uh, uh, incarnation of it. Oh, what if I wanted that as a ufunc? Well, I could write it in C. Like the only way to do it, and there was a way to do it, you had to write C code and compile it. I wanted to write that in Python. And I had this, there was a decorator called vectorize. And that's in NumPy from the beginning, NumPy vectorize. So you could, you could create, a Python function and vectorize would take that scalar kernel and then make a ufunc that would call that function at every element. Cool. It would add a new ufunc. Cool ish. But the problem is it wasn't a compiler. Like you need a compiler to do that, right? The vectorize in NumPy didn't compile. What it did is it, it made an object array ufunc, right? So object arrays are simply every element of the NumPy array is a pointer to a Python object. So you know, logistically useful because you can organize your thoughts in, a, in an array nicely, but it's not fast. You're basically going through the interpreter every time you make a call. So I had vectorize, but it was a going through the interpreter. So you know, if you have a big array, lots of elements could be 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 x slower. So I wanted a way to write a function in Python that could go into that ufunc table. So I just wanted to compile and get machine code in the right table, a function pointer. So how do I make a function to a function pointer? It's not all of possible Python, just, just you know, the spelling of Python, use Python spelling to get code. That was the goal. And, so, and it's like, yeah, we can do that. LLVM was there, low level, low level virtual machines. And oh, uh, like I said, it's easy to write a compiler if you're not writing the parser <laughs> or, or the code generator, because essentially what you're doing is translating Python either bytecode or Python abstract syntax representation to the LLVM intermediate representation. So that's what Numba did, is it translated the Python bytecode to LLVM IR. 
basically it played the Python bytecode and emitted LLVM IR for a subset of Python. And it was actually surprisingly, like I could do it uh, as a person who'd never write a compiler before. And I learned a ton along the way. And then other people wrote better code. And it's, that's been, and it worked. It's like, wow, I can actually now write a vectorize. And we do, Numba has a vectorize function that lets you write a Python syntax and build a machine code level ufunk. And that's amazing. That was really the goal. And we did it pretty quickly, right? And then it was like, well, we have a compiler now. What else can we do? And so then we kind of built a JIT and then kind of this gradual, you know, just-in-time compilation for num NumPy-like code. Lots of extensions that really could have been. And, you know, Numba was another example of an open source project succeeded because some really smart people got involved. And then, all we, you know, looking, it's been funded by Anaconda. I, I, you know, we can go into detail about Numba. Numba's had a, you know, it's a harder code base for users to get involved with because it's a compiler. And, you know, if you're a domain expert, which uses Numba, it's kind of hard to go from I'm a domain expert using Numba to now I'm contributing to Numba because I've learned how a compiler works. It's, it, it's a different thing. So, but that space has exploded. We were very early. That was 2012 when we first released Numba. We had a version that actually targeted GPUs. You could actually have a, it was a fast vectorized, basically. The vectorized code would go on a GPU. And we had massive, like 10,000 X speedups because you could go from your object array, you vectorize to, you know, GPU supported vectorize. Uh, it was amazing. Like, and there's a little gamification there, but, but it was possible. And that's still happening today. Like it's, we haven't complete, like that's still happening. But what I find is a lot of people get confused and they start talking about Python compilation. You have to be very clear about what you're doing. But because compilation just simply, it's it's translating high-level language, high-level specification to machine code. And I look forward to a future where you know Python interface to LLM gives you a I'm I'm basically orchestrating compilers. Uh, and Sue's a great, I still have you know, regular conversation with Sue. I think Numba has a bright future, but there's also Jax, there's PyTorch Compile, there's Triton, there's uh, lots of, there's five others. There's LPython. There's, it's actually a fun place now where there's a lot of people realizing, oh yeah, this is possible to write Python compilation. And now lots of money involved. They typically don't talk to each other. They typically kind of do their deep stack stuff and try to find, I'm excited today about finding high level cooperative IR, intermediate representations. So LLVM IR is pretty low level and bytecode is Python. Is there like a ML IR is one place? Like, is there a place to have these higher level intermediate representations that are not quite low level IR, but a place to target? Because then you can have other tools target that. And it's a really um, easy way to cooperate if you can find a, a plateau of cooperation. Uh, in fact, I think that's a big deal and will continue to be a big deal as LLMs enter our world and let people write English code to generate generate something. But what are you generating? Like, I think what you're generating becomes that plateau of cooperation that's really interesting and will continue to be because the thing you generate still has to be editable, still has to be maintained by a human, but it doesn't have to be like all the domain experts can maintain it. You got to have a class of people that can. So anyway, that's a whole topic yeah. of future potential progress I'm looking forward to.